Hi, um, yes, welcome. I'm here. Wonderful, I can hear you, Chris. Great. And don't forget to visit all the uh, wonderful art studios down there at Plaza Mayor when you have a break later on. Here he is. Well, he is not with us on stage, but on the other side of the, uh, well, some kind of water. You're with us from Scotland. This is wonderful. That's right. Mm. That's and right. Uh, Chris, I'll have to give you a nice proper intro here. You're co co-author of Active Hope and Resilience Specialist at collegeofwellbeing.com. And um, you suggest that we should look at the way we communicate with ourselves, um, how we listen to ourselves, and how we talk to ourselves. Uh, to that, and that, that can make a crucial difference. So please give Chris Johnston a warm hand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're on the art of communicating the climate crisis. And I want to say that one of the most people, most important people to communicate with is ourselves, particularly when we're facing this question, what helps us face the mess we're in and respond with active hope? And I wanted to say a bit about what I mean by active hope, that the word hope you can use in different ways. So one is with the question, are you hopeful? And I'm, uh, uh, for me, my level of hopefulness, it rises and falls. And sometimes I don't feel so hopeful. And I work a lot with people who don't feel at all hopeful. And a lot of my work is running workshops that helps us um, strengthen our capacity to face our concerns about the world. And I find a more helpful question is, what do you hope for? that even if you're hopeless, you may be clear what you hope for. It's a more motivating question. And then looking at how you make your hopes more likely to occur. And I think of active hope, it's not so much something that you have, it's something that you do. It's something that you can do every day, a practice, a bit like some people do Tai Chi, a practice every day to support well-being. Active hope is a practice we can do every day to support the well-being of our world and also ourselves in that. Um, it's something we do rather than have. And in that, I find helpful what I call a spider diagram. The spider diagram, if you imagine a spider on its side, where uh, the body is the present moment, each leg is the way things can go. And there's better ways things can go and worse ways things can go. And I was just hearing um, Asa Elmstrom, the, the jewelry, jewelry maker just a few minutes ago, she was saying that uh, she had a deep, um, deep, die, fell into depression, uh, which is very common when we encounter disturbing information about climate change. And what I'm interested in is even when we find ourselves on one of the worst dips of the, um, the spider, one of the worst legs, that we can still respond there. We can uh, look at what helps us rise to the occasion, whether that be a turning in the world or a turning in our lives. And what I, I look at is what I call active hope training. Active hope training is about how we nourish and cultivate our capacity, intention, and enthusiasm to make a difference in, a world, in the world. And what I'd like to invite you all to take part in now is just a very short conversation with yourself. It can also be a conversation with other people when we have more time to nudge and nourish our response of active hope when we're concerned about the world. And I'm very influenced by my close work over more than three decades with Joanna Macy, an American writer who's been doing a work around strengthening people's capacity to respond to world concerns for over 40 years. And she invites us to take part in this um, spiral, spiral of the work that reconnects, these four steps. And I want to introduce a short form that we can do in just about five minutes. So um, we're gonna start with gratitude and gratitude is nourishing. I think of the roots of a plant, it's what you draw in, uh, what sustains you, what keeps you going. And I'd just like you to um, have a sentence starter. This I invite you to think about this now, a sentence starter that begins with, for supporting me to live, I give thanks to. So this is something that you can do in your own time, it, uh, uh, you, something that you can do for supporting me to live, I give thanks to. Who do you support for support, who, who does support you? 
I think when I take a big breath in, invite you to do this with me, take a big breath in. On Mars, there's no oxygen. On Venus, there's no oxygen. We have about 20% oxygen. And for supporting me to live, I give thanks to all plant life, that without that plant life, we wouldn't have the oxygen. And when you give attention to what's supporting you, the natural systems that are supporting us, you may also open to the horror of what's happening to them. The, and the, this really moves to the next part of the spiral, honoring our pain for the world. And I wanna hold the question, well, how do we feel? Um, how do we deal with the feelings that come up when we look at the mess that we're in? It's such an important question because quite often people look at the mess and they think that's too depressing. I just don't wanna look, I'm just gonna turn away. And while that's understandable, it actually blocks our response. And so the way we hold our pain can make a crucial difference. And I want to look at three ways of holding our pain. The first is in the meaning that we give to it. What meaning do we give? Do we think this is just too depressing, I don't want to look? Or do we see the, the meaning of pain is that it functions as an alarm call that can alert us to danger? I think of it as a call to adventure that starts us off, it alerts us to a threat. But also in terms of, um, if we just think we're the only person feeling this way, we can feel isolated with it. And so what we do is set up groups and um, support conversations where we can acknowledge how we feel when facing the climate crisis, but also have trusted practices that help us be with feelings of disturbance without getting overwhelmed. And that's what we're doing just now. We're doing a trusted practice, it's called open sentences, um, sentence starters, we have a beginning of a sentence and we see what naturally follows. So here's the next one. When I look out at the world, what concerns me is, just inviting you to give your attention to that right now. When I look out at the world, what concerns me is. And then just for a moment, give, um, just wonder well, what feelings come up when you think about this? So when I look out at the world, what concerns me is, and feelings I have about this incl include. We get people in groups to have this conversation together. I write it down in my notebook. Um, I often think just, you know, well, when I look out at the world, what concerns me? What feelings come up? Those feelings can be a source of energy. We can learn to draw on them and they can also guide us. I have feelings of alarm, of horror, of fear. And, and it's helpful to be providing space to honor those feelings, but then see that as the starting point of an adventure. We go on a quest to look at what helps us respond. And that's where we move to the next part of this spiral, which is about, um, I call it seeing with new eyes. Seeing with new eyes is recognizing that what we see depends on how we look. And so, for example, I've got here a, a ring of, of squares. One way of looking is to guide it by the question, what's it made of? You can focus on the pieces, but you can also look at a piece and say, what's it part of? And we can look at ourselves and say, what are we part of? You can look at an action that you take for climate change and you say, what's that part of? Larger stories happen through the different scenes. Larger patterns happen through their parts. Larger systems act through their parts. And so a really um, useful uh, sentence starter I'm gonna invite you to think of is, what happens through me? What happens through me is, you can do this every day. Just say, what happens through me? What happens through me is, because we have choices, we shape what happens through us. It could be the story of business as usual happens through us. It could be heavy use of fossil fuels happens through us. It could be that collectively a mass extinction event is happening through us and the way that we collectively as a human species act on this planet, particularly in industrialized societies, but also our choices steer and shape the flow of what happens through us. And this idea of active hope every day, it's a practice we can engage in, being active to support the future we hope for. And if we do that every day, 
what happens through us or what can happen through us is the recovery of our world. And this leads to then the next part of this um, spiral going forth. Going forth is looking at what's our role, what's our part. And a sentence starter here is a place I want to focus my energy is. So I'm introducing a practice. It's a way of having a conversation with ourselves. It can also be a conversation that happens between people where every day we say, OK, for supporting me to live, I give thanks to. When I look out at the world, what concerns me is and feelings that come up about this are. What happens through me is. And in order to influence and shape what happened through me is a place I want to focus my energy is. And through that, what happens is we give our gift of active hope. Our gift of active hope is our contribution to this larger story of change. We don't have time to wait. We do have time to act. The story of active hope, the practice of active hope can happen through us all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris Johnson. That was beautiful. And I'm curious, when you speak to other people, when we talk to and interact with other people, how can we apply this beautiful circle, this, this method in this, in this communication? One of the ways is to be interested in what we're grateful for. And to have that as a conversation, to have perhaps if we have a meeting on climate change, um, uh, gratitude is a motivator in the same way that fear and alarm are. They're both important. It's not that one's more or less important than the other, but also we feel differently when we're acting from our gratitude, when we want to give back to what supports us. But I think the other thing is that when we have a conversation about our alarm, our distress, when we have our dips of depression about this, we don't turn away. We just provide a space to hear that and to acknowledge that as a vital um, alarm call that our world is in distress and then have the conversation saying well okay what inspires me and what's my part so these four things of gratitude honoring our pain of seeing with new eyes and going forth thank you mm -hmm.